I think it would be a great song today. It has such a great intro to it. But you know the best, really best part of it is when he says, no one can change that but you. And then he pauses and then it goes into the whole chorus. It's just... Like this girl knew what was going on and she just had to make him see it. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to the Sean Squad Society Podcast with your hosts, myself, Cindy, Doris, Dame Madonna, where we invite you to share in our enthusiasm and reminisce about all things Sean Cassidy. From his teen idol days to his recent adventures back on the road again. Please join us for the stories and memories that connected us to those happy days that helped create the Sean Squad Society Podcast. This album is called Under Wraps, and this is the one we're going to talk about. I think the album was released July of 1978, and it was a pop record, and Michael Lloyd produced it. It was Sean's third album. It peaked at number 33 on the top 40 of the U.S. Billboard charts, and it was the song Our Night that peaked number 80 on the United States Hot 100 or U.S. Hot 100. So Our Night was the single from the album. I don't remember that. I have it at home. And I got it. I remember how the uh, record sleeve looked and everything. Oh, Mm -hmm. the single? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I don't know if I have that single. Well, you and a whole lot of people because it only went to number 80-something on the top 100. I don't remember being on the radio. They didn't play it. Maybe that's why. If they played it more on the radio, it would have been even higher. They didn't play it much at that's all. That's why. Do you remember we'll hearing it, it on radio? No. no. Although, all of these songs are so sappy. It's it's cute and funny, and it, I, I just have to leave it at cute, I guess. I think, yes. I think <laughs> Under Wraps is my favorite album. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. it's my, and, that, and that might explain... Some of the uh, lack of, of sales and, uh, you know, we were getting older by record th- three. Right. So by Under Wraps, I was already a senior in high school. But isn't this funny? Because mm-hmm. this is only a year later. Yeah. How time goes by. We get old Did, in one year. <laughs> yeah. Did you notice that most of these songs are all romance and to have just one love, which I love. I mean, that's pretty cool that he started that young wanting to sing songs I like know, this. I know, I know. And. And so many of them were about just, you know, getting a second chance. And then in his show, you know, Magic of the Midnight Sky. Well, so many of these songs are about midnight and the lights. And I yeah. don't know. That's... Well, I wanted to talk about the album cover. Yeah. Oh, okay. What do you think about the album cover? I love it. I've always loved it. I did like it when I bought yeah. it. I was like, this looks pretty cool. I love the yeah. color. I love yeah. how it's just like. Real mysterious. I love the blue. I remember a long time ago reading in Tiger Beetle somewhere. You see that Asian uh, yeah, what writing? Is that? On, I read yes. a long time ago on the tie I see it. what that meant. Mm-hmm. And, what does it mean? Well, now I don't remember. <laughs> well, look, it's at the top, but it's also at the bottom of it, too. Yes. And I think they're two different sayings or something. What did Sean say about this cover? Because he wrote something. Yeah, Sean always has a meaning behind his covers. And he Mm -hmm. did talk about this album cover, that it was his idea. And they all tell a story, he says. So this one is basically about how he was sheltered and how plastic pop culture was viewed. So he was, in essence, making fun of himself for the record. And the whole pop experience, he says. Yeah. yeah. So this mm-hmm. was his view on pop culture at the time. Yeah. Which reflected mm-hmm. in his album Under Some Plastic. Yeah. He was just being sheltered. Yeah. He's in a, a bubble. Yeah. He's mm-hmm. under wraps. Under wraps. He's wrapped he, up. He, he, he can't yeah. get out. He's wrapped he can't up get in out. plastic pop. Yeah. He's been from under the wraps for a real long yeah, time. Yeah. We unwrapped him pretty awesome. good, didn't we? That's the first thing <laughs> yeah. we did. We got the album. We unwrapped it. <laughs> I remember the day I got the album. Yeah. I went to the record store. I couldn't wait. You know, you always knew when the next album was coming out. 
Tiger Beat made sure we knew that. And wasn't there a commercial about it? I remember the Born Late commercial. The Under Wraps commercial, I just don't remember that much. I don't either. But um, ran out, as we all did, ran to the record store, Let's Boogie, my favorite store, and got Under Wraps. And did you girls do this? Did you run home with the record, open it up right away, first of all, look inside to see if there's any kind of surprise in there. Like a poster. <laughs> or a poster, oh, something. There was. And under I wraps? Look. Yeah. What was it? Well, I looked inside. I just saw all the words to the songs. I didn't see Oh, the... yeah, I thought there was a poster, the blue one. Maybe not. I don't remember that. No, the only thing blue I got was the words. I remember the uh, album sleeve had the the lyrics, yeah. and I was very yes. excited about that. Yes, that's what I'm talking about in the mm-hmm. blue. So I was looks like the magic of a midnight sky yeah, with was, the little and then the the words that are popping out with the names of the songs looks yes. like the stars. Yes, you they, get it? They actually they do. <laughs> actually they do. <laughs> it and, does. And I was so thrilled. And the other thing I do after I look for the the um surprise, I usually will play <laughs> the record. Only like the intro and then the middle, skip the needle up a little for each song, just to get a taste of what each song You couldn't sounds wait through like. one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because yeah, I couldn't tell. wait. And, yeah. and it was so great That's to funny. hear the new songs. And you always heard one, you're like, oh. That yeah, would be my reaction. But we're oh, going to talk about these yeah. songs, so we'll go through them and see what we like, what we didn't like. Well, what was yeah. what was the deal with it? What you thought it was, maybe the deal with it, you know, your interpretation yeah. okay. of it. Well, but yeah, as a teenager, all we had were like magazines and records. To that's what look I lived. To. That's that was my life. <laughs> that's well, my life first too. Song. I went to school, I read my magazines, and I listened to my records. Exactly, that was the media back then. And if he was on so TV, you didn't make it through. Yeah, yeah, the first song even. TV, you wanted to move that needle. Oh yeah, Dame. In the beginning, I would play the album, the side uh-huh. A and B, just moving the needle. Then I would sit down and listen to each <laughs> song all the way through. Oh, you did? So you did like audio I'm, testers. I'm just not. Uh-huh. I do that today with books. I can't uh-huh. wait. So I skim to the middle, read a paragraph or two, a chapter, and then I skim to the end and read. And it's, I just can't wait. I don't know what it is about me. I have to yeah. know the ending. You got to get to the good stuff. Yes. <laughs> so I did that with Under Wraps and all of his albums. Yeah. So the first song, the first song came on pretty, pretty powerful, I thought. Hard it love. It was upbeat. It was upbeat. It is up- I like upbeat. That. When you started, it was like, okay, yeah, let's get this record going. And I yeah. liked it because it didn't have a, um, it had more of an adult upbeat rock and roll sound. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't, you knew, it wasn't bubblegum. Right. He was advancing no. in his yes. sound. Yes. Yeah. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. I'll go along with this one. Yeah. I loved Hard Love. And, yeah. you know, the lyrics are pretty um, racy. Yeah. What for, do you think? For, well, for a teenage girl who was, Maybe 12 when they first started yes. listening, and now it's like, yeah, he's singing about he met her on a Monday and then he moved up to, I need a hard love to get me inside. Well, Something does... deep down, turning me around, burning in my heart, boy. Yeah, he... he's burning well, now. <laughs> I think he's saying that he just doesn't want a one night stand, and that sounds like Sean. So I think he. He was okay with the song, you know. It's just, it sounds like he's almost scared, though, and he needs someone just that he can hide with. Right. He he wants a, a true love, not a one-night stand. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. He, talks, he wants her in the bubble. <laughs> yeah, in the, wrapped up in the plastic with him. 
<laughs> yeah, it was um pretty good. I was very happy. I'm like, okay. Mm-hmm. And maybe that just showed a little bit of my maturity. You know, I yeah. was like, this is such a great song. Maybe like he was growing up with us. He was going along with us as we aged and advanced. He did too. What if he wrote some of these songs years ago and he was just waiting to get them out? Like, he oh, was no. like I wrote this song when I was 16 and I'm <laughs> ready to release well, it now. He's burning in his heart at 16. <laughs> well, yeah, it sounded like well. He, in the song, he sounds like he's just saying he's so lonely at night um, and that he just needs someone, somebody to take away his loneliness, which is ironic because we know he wasn't lonely. Maybe, maybe, who knows? But well, I'm pretty sure he wasn't. He was still a teenager back then. <laughs> I'm sure we were all saying, pick me, I'll be it, don't worry, I'm here. You yeah. need yes. a heart, love. I got my backpack. Where can I meet you? <laughs> he, he wrote the song in 1978 because it says it's from Sean Songs. Okay. Yeah, it Not, must have been his it was, publishing name. Okay. Songs. Yeah, he didn't need a hard love. It was easy to find a love for Easy him. to find. Yep. Okay, now <laughs> second one, Taxi Dancer. That's your favorite. That's my favorite one. Yeah, that's my favorite. The first thing I notice in this song, the first thing I notice is that it's named Taxi Dancer, but that Mm -hmm. that's not pronounced that way throughout the song. Or maybe it is. But you know how songs you can't always hear the enunciation. Well, the wording here says Taxi Dance. All right. It doesn't in the words of the song. It does not say Taxi Dancer. So maybe it just didn't go right in the song, but he oh, wanted to yeah. name it Taxi Dancer because that's what they were. I know, Doris, mm-hmm. you had a story about Taxi Dancers. Well, this is one of those things. You know how I remember crazy crap from yeah. a million years ago? Yep. And I read in Tiger Beat, they would tell you a lot. And they said, what is a Taxi Dancer? And a Taxi Dancer was like... Back in the real old days when you had uh, ballroom dancing, and it kind of went past that Mm -hmm. a little bit into the 50s and 60s, but they would have dance cards. Ladies would have dance cards, and you pay however much to be on their dance card, and they called them taxi dancers. And they would go around and dance with the gentleman who paid the dollar or the quarter to whatever it costs to get on the dance with them. Yes, and that's how that phrase you used to hear. You don't hear it so much anymore, but you used to hear, you got room on your dance card for me? Or, you know, things like that. But this is just dancing, right? Yeah. We're not talking about a dessert. Well, it says, dance all night and hold me tight. Almost sounds like a date that his parents had. You know, their first days. days. That's true. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's what a taxi dancer was. But the song is so cool because I love the way he said, and I'm going from memory. I haven't looked at the lyrics in years, but Taxi Dance putting on another show, but darling, didn't you, you know, know? We were we in love were, with we you. We were in love with you. And we all cried the same tears too. See, she was just out there dancing with these guys. Playing with the schoolboys' hearts. Yeah. Yeah. And Sheila was the name in there. Which could be anybody. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I thought it was cute he used the name. Maybe he knew somebody named Sheila back then. Maybe. Oh, I just went with it. But yeah, I just really, that was a good song. I was like, I didn't really get it. You know, we were young. We, But I'm like, I really liked the melody of it. Mm-hmm. And the way he would say, putting on another show. Yeah. I, I really yeah. liked that. Yes, Cindy, what was your favorite, favorite part of it? Part of it, I like all of it. Yeah. I mean, okay. I was impressed even how he wrote this. Like, he didn't know back then that he was going to be a writer yet. Yes. But he was uh-huh. so good at writing songs. So it kind of just ties yeah, in with he his wrote it. writing. Because... For a 19, 20-year-old man to be yeah. writing about a taxi dancer, that's before his time. And he, so he's, he's he, smart. He knows history. He studies history. Yeah. And he knows what came before him. And he, obviously, writing about it. He was already b- brilliant at a young age. Right. Yeah. Well, we got Lie to Me. That's the next one. Lie to Me. I heard it from a friend. I knew that it couldn't be true. Now I'm hearing it again. This time, 
That was it's some, a slow. Do you know how you get the one you go? Uh, yeah, yeah, I know. It's like when's it gonna be over? I know. That was one of them. Yeah. He's singing about a girl that he wants to lie to him because he doesn't want to know that she really doesn't want to be with him. He doesn't want to be hurt. Yeah, <laughs> but it says I know yeah. you're not trying. You're. I know you're trying not to hurt me. Promise that you won't desert me and lie to me, girl. So he doesn't want her to go away. Right. Well, the person that wrote it, his name was Bill LaBounty. Mm-hmm. And I, I listened. And did Sean help with I mean, he helped it to get out there better. We'll put it that way. Well, yeah, Bill LaBounty and Jay Center. Oh, yeah, 1975. 70, and they sang it in 1975. Did they? Okay. I think so. If this could be a cover. Who knows? I didn't really pay much attention. Yeah, I don't know. As it wasn't yes. my favorite on the album. No. So, me you neither. know how you skip the needle up? That's let's, what I would do. Give it a two out of five. I think Sean did help with the song because if what I read was correct in 1975, the writers, when they did it, didn't come out as sounding as well. I think I even listened to it oh. from the other singers, the ones that wrote it. But Sean did a better job with it, but it still didn't go. Yeah, you know, up the way it should have. Maybe it was a better arrangement or something. Right. It yeah. would have been better. I just didn't like how it sounded. It didn't, yeah. I don't know. It wasn't pop enough for me to mm-hmm. like. I guess. Right. Yeah. Well, the next one is One More Night of Your Love. No. Okay. What do you think about that one? It's good. I, I, it was iffy on that one, too. I liked it. I mean, it wasn't, I didn't put the needle forward. I listened to it. Did you? I was sing along with it. Yeah. I was, I, I think I was in deep thought about that one, trying to really figure out what he was saying. Give me a well, lyric. You, well, I know that I've been nervous these many nights we've shared, and I know I've often treated you like you just weren't there. But all I can say is, please don't turn away. Hold me in your arms until the light of day. Give me one more that's night of your love. That's another song that's similar. It just sounds like the other songs as far as what it's saying. He just was ignoring her. Yeah. He was so. ignoring her? Is that what it's Yeah, it's, okay. it's, and I know I've often treated you like you just weren't there. So oh, in today's so terms, sorry. in today's terms, he, he, he was ghosting the chick, the poor yeah. girl. Yes. Ghosting that's what it sounds her. like. Yeah. Yeah, that's... What it's all about. So, but at the end, it says the ghosts are getting even now. See? Oh, so he put see? the ghost in there. He knew the term long. You knew. Long before it was. You knew the saying, what that meant. And it meant that even back then, I guess, at least to Sean. Yeah, but now he's got to put himself back together somehow. Baby somehow, baby somehow. Well, see, I thought he was saying maybe <laughs> somehow. And he said baby somehow. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? It uh, in life too. I'm sorry, man, out there listening, but you do us wrong. You ghost us. You treat us bad. We move on, and guess who's coming back now? Right. Asking for one more night. I'm sorry. <laughs> Ain't happening. And now yeah. he's trying to put it back together. <laughs> That's right. So give me one more chance, baby. Somehow. Well, maybe. <laughs> That was a short lyric song, too. Not a whole lot to say when oh. you go somebody and she ditches you and now you want her back. Yeah, so he got to the point and then he was done. Yeah. All That's right, the next funny. one. Dame. It's like heaven. I love it when you talk to me. Don't, it's like 
You go, Dave. Okay. Day. Okay. This is what I was excited about. I didn't want to wait. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so this one was written by the founding Beach Boy, um, Brian Wilson. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was really cool, but I didn't even know that until I started, you know, studying a little bit and just uh, as a reminder. But what I when I think of this song, I think of heaven because I didn't get to see him as you know, like when you guys did when he was you know, younger, you were younger. Mm -hmm. And I remember hearing this song at that first concert when I was there with you girls in Nashville. Yes. He sang it there. I was in heaven. And I lit, yes, I melted. But anyway, when I was sitting there and I heard him sing that the first time, I just felt, I felt the words like heaven in your eyes. And I was just like, oh yes. And then, (laughs) you know what this song, you know, what got me that first line? You know how I you had me at hello? Talk to me. I love it when you talk to me. Oh, he had me at hello and <laughs> talk to me. Oh, I, I was hooked at that. Loved one. this mm-hmm. song. I, I was did. hooked. Yes, it's you know, my favorite. Just recently on our social media, I used this song in a, a bunch of posts. I yes. used it to to promote us for our <laughs> episode that was just before this one. You can find it on Facebook, Instagram. And you too. And I love this song so much. I just love the way I love it when you talk to me. Yes. Um, Yes. Because a lot of people don't listen. Mm -hmm. Mm. So, Sean, so Brian Wilson was actually, you know, saying, You can talk to me. I love that. I listen. Yeah. So finally, he has a person that he loves and everything's going good and it's just like heaven being it's with like her oh, and he's so happy one. now so this relationship is not a, a scorned you know you left me i yeah, left no you i did like you wrong song. this one is they're together they're yes. happy and just listening to her talk he's just in heaven and when sean sings yes. it today or when he was touring he sang it he ended it so well he said it will never, ever end. Because it says, when will it ever end? Yes. When will it ever I know. end? And, and Sean said it will never, never end. ever end. And in the song, he says, as he sings it, it's still so beautiful. And it says, for so long, we had waited for this feeling mm-hmm. of being with him. And like in the show, too. Yeah. So it kind of went along with that. You know, and I was just like, all these years I've waited and here I am and he's singing my favorite song. And I just almost wanted to cry, which is weird, but so it almost that's sounds like, okay. It almost sounds like it's a phone conversation. Okay. Cause listen, cause in the mm-hmm. beginning, I love it when you talk to me. So for so long, I've held onto this feeling. And if all my dreams come true tonight, I'll be with you tonight and to kiss you tonight. So he's obviously One. talking to her on the phone, loves the conversations, okay. but is waiting for that Yes. Time where they get together and they get to kiss each other. And maybe he hasn't met her yet. Yeah, right. but they've, it, been, yeah. they've been on the phone. This is long before social media and what is that? Uh, those dating yeah. apps where you talk for a minute or two. And, then, and, and that's probably it. They were friends. They talked. Mm-hmm. And for so mm-hmm. long, I held on to this feeling. And now with all my dreams come true, I'll be with you tonight. But in the first paragraph of the song, it says, but you're afraid to walk with me through the storm. So maybe she didn't want to get into a relationship. Yeah, Yeah, a hard life. Maybe she didn't want a relationship, but she liked talking to him. And that was like, just, he was happy with that. She was probably very comfortable with, Mm -hmm. he wanted to move (laughs) it up a little bit. Let's stop getting on this phone and get over here because I can kiss you. It's uh-huh. such a great song, okay. though. And I love it. It yes. resonates so well today. It's such a great song. Mm-hmm. And did you know Brian Wilson's daughter was also a Sean Cassidy fan? Carney? Carney, yeah. Yeah. So Carney was excited when I think Sean went over to their house one time. There was a story about that. She was excited to meet him. Yeah. So it's nice that they have that connection. That's awesome. Yep. All right, next song, side two. Oh, we're flipping okay. the album over. Turn it over. And the first song is Our Night. I liked Our it. I, it was upbeat, and it started right away, and I got along with it. Cindy got along. <laughs> I got along How with it. How did you yeah. feel about it, Dame, our night? Well, he said in the song to his girl, no matter what she wanted, he wanted it too. And I kind of thought that was funny um, because once you're together a long time, it's not always like that. But what man that's been married for a long time is going to say, well, whatever you like, I like. And so... 
like when I when I'm looking at the words or listening to it, I go, well, he may be a romantic, but this was something any girl wants to hear. But maybe not after so many years they've been together. I can't see a man still saying that. But who knows? Sean may be that man. You know, you know? what? I that's think, what I thought was funny. I think it's going to be our night. This is the first time this is going to be mm-hmm. our night. I think it's that one. <laughs> Hold on. Let me see if I can get this one on. Is that the one that says that? All right. I don't know. There was one that says until we get it right. All right. Playing our night. Oh, you can't hear that song? Yeah, it's okay. I was listening to it yesterday. And in the song, he just said to the girl, no matter what she wanted, he wanted it too. (laughs) Yes, exactly right. (laughs) I mean, I liked it. I didn't have any complaints about it. I don't hate it. (laughs) Dirty. I hate it. It's a good song. Okay. Yeah, I think so, too. So, in the next song was She's Right. Okay. <laughs> let's get the, let's get the me feeling going. That first riff. Had me right here, right now. Oh. I'm hooked. Because it's oh. got this jazz, R&B, soul mm-hmm. intro. Oh, my God. Is this your favorite? I cannot tell you how much I love She's Right. Okay. You must be your favorite. A lie. So you can't hear it, but it's something about the way the, the arrangement of this song. It's the lyrics of this song. There's okay. this girl that's been telling him. You don't know what you're talking about. And you got to get this stuff right. And and until you do, you're going to be a mess. Right. This girl that he met, it's not a girlfriend or anything. It was just a lady who was kind of telling him, hey, this is how, I guess, life is. Yeah. Well, the advice. The advice that she gave him. It was the advice. She had no idea what she was giving him. It's a sultry song. I love the horns. I think it would be a great song today. It has such a great intro to it. But you know the best, really best part of it is when he says, no one can change that but you. And then he pauses, and then it goes into the whole chorus. It's just... Like this girl knew what was going on, and she just had to make him see it. Yeah. Yeah. In the end, no one can change and it. He wrote but a song you. about it. Yeah, but her. How special! It was. Uh, oh my God, I love. She's right. Anybody who knows me has heard me screaming every time he would play. She's right. Yeah, but I love the Sean Cassidy live album version the best. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that okay. was good. That was good. I like that one. Something, some other dimension it brings to it when it's live. Yeah. And, and, uh, and I think that's when you saw him at Navy Pier in Chicago, right? I saw him at Navy Pier in Chicago. And when She's Right came on, I thought I was going to lose it. Because <laughs> I, I, I didn't, and you know, you don't know what songs they're going to do. Yes. And I didn't uh-huh. expect him to do She's Right. And you mm-hmm. hear that very beginning. I'm like, oh, God, I'm just take me out What now. a present for I you. think I remember, because I saw him too at Navy <laughs> Pier. Yeah, that was Doris <laughs> in the Scream crowd. <laughs> yeah. Listen yeah, but the that. song's got a good beat to it. And it's upbeat. Yes. You know, it's an upbeat song. I just like it because it's not like any of his other songs with the way that the the guitar, the horns, Mm -hmm. they uh, they all go together. It does sound good together. Yeah. That was a good arrangement. All right. Next one. Midnight Sun. Midnight Sun. A little bit slower. Yeah. Was written by Peter McCann. Peter McCann. McCann. Yeah. (laughs) And it says. So it says that. Yeah. Yeah. Once I had a lady love with eyes so black and cold, we spun our life and times into gold. She was the only one. She was my midnight sun. She could come and take the night away. But that's cute. That's sweet. He's he again, he's saying you're the only one. 
Yeah, which, I mean, it's positive, and... Uh, yeah. I'm with you, Cindy. I wasn't the biggest fan of Midnight Sun, so kind of yeah. didn't listen to it a lot. But he's trying to talk about this girl he was with before, but she was really into material things. You know, okay. I saw black and cold. We spun our life into gold, but she moved on to harder things, money, love, and diamond rings. So she oh, was a no. materialistic girl. Yeah. Troll. And she left him far behind, and she left him in the dust. Yeah. No, she went care. on and found her sugar daddy. But he said she was the only one. Well, she was his midnight son. So apparently <laughs> she had a good impression on him. <laughs> yeah. She had a good impression. Yeah. Not really. He grew up. Oh, but now he finds himself in love again with nobody else but you. See what life can do with a smile. So sometimes if I think of her, don't you blame it all on me. She's in my memory for just a little while. Oh, yeah. it's like an, you never like an ex. Forget. X. So he did mm-hmm. move on to somebody else, but he, she's always in his mind. Huh. Cause that, mm, I don't know what to think of that. Well, it ha- it's true. Yeah, I mean. I hate to say it, it happens. Even okay, to this that, day with that me, there are, there's someone okay. that I will never forget. Right, they're forget. in your memory, but you, okay. it doesn't mean you were meant to be with them. Exactly. But no. they just came into your life and then they were gone. And they had a reason. But, right. But every chapter in life, too, makes us who we are. Right, it builds even, your... Even the bad chapters, even the bad exes. Right, the chapters build your life, like these songs do. Mm-hmm. And we all have a midnight sun, I think. I know I do. I'll never forget him. He he's he was there for a reason and and yeah. And, he's and it was gone. on to something else. Mm-hmm. So last song, right before your skies. Places please the lights go down. I'm glad it was at the end because I stopped playing the record at that point. I really like the end, the way the song ended. I love the way it ended. But I think it's a good song to be at the end because it kind of fades it out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He wrote it. Well, yeah, he wrote it. And in the song, the word protocol in here, well, that, of course, we know because that's the way things are supposed to be. Yeah, it says, places please, the lights go down, a brand new town, and we all look no worse for wear, hiding on the stairs, holding on to all we know. You know what he's singing about. You know what he's singing about. Places please, the lights go down. A show? A brand new town. It's a show. Yeah. You're, okay. They call places, the lights go down. You're holding on to that stair. People are looking at you. I really like mm-hmm. this song. Yeah, it was about just being in it's another show. Well, because he says, yeah, uh, suddenly we're so far away from yesterday and tomorrow we'll be far from here. We yep. just disappear. So when you watch a show, it, you take you get taken away for a while. Yeah. An escape. It's an escape. Right. So it says living in disguise. Remember how it used to be right before yeah. your skies. I don't understand that part right before your skies. I remember listening to the song. I'm like, he's singing the experience either from the stage or from the audience, but it's the experience of a show. Mm -hmm. How you feel when you go see a show? Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, I used to love that song a lot. And like you said, it's a good book. It really wraps up the album. It is, and if I'm done listening to the rest of them, I'll just turn off by that point. It's short. It's <laughs> very short. It's I know, not a long song at I all. I don't like how it ended. It had a weird piano. Yeah. Fade out thing? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe he was... You know what I mean? It yeah. was a weird sounding ending. It did have a, a very weird ending. Uh, and it's really the first time that one of his records hasn't brought an immediate shower of attention to it. Oh. But... I'm sad about that because I really liked it and I thought it was going to be going, mm-hmm. I thought it was going to be going full speed ahead. Well, yeah. 
this album, everybody, I, I'll say it again, everybody grew up by the time On The Raps came out. Yeah, but this and was a year later. It, yeah, but it's no, you think about when you're 10 to 12, man, do you grow. Well, That's true. you know, you just age, not age, you mature, you <laughs> get different, things change. So he's writing all these slower, more romantic, more adult songs with with no True. with no teeny bopper bubblegum sound to them at all. Yes. Oh, that's a good point, Doris. And most of these songs are about second chances. And what twelve year old <laughs> is going to need a second chance? Yeah, you know, his first two he didn't need competition. They no. were just. You know, going out there making money, and then this one is like, well, it, it people aren't just flocking to it, right? You gotta compete, and they did, and the sales weren't there. No, I know, and I also heard some sad news too. His drummer Carlos Vega on the yeah. record, he uh, he died. Carlos Vega was a a very popular drummer. Oh, really? Yeah. Back in his day, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, he passed away. Sad. I wish that they would have used, you know, Eric again for one of these songs, or if he had one of those songs, that'd be good. That would really be catchy on this album. Yes. Yeah, and you know, I noticed yes. too, Jackie Ward, Ron Hicklin, I think they're on the Partridge Family Records. On his well, record. you know, they use a lot of studio, studio. people, right. so if they needed them. They those found... are familiar names. Well, we know that Sean definitely grew up. But be- be- yes. from the debut album, Sean Cassidy, to Under Wraps, those songs are a lot different. Yeah, and I'm glad back yeah. then that they let him have his creative, like his ideas. Yes. Like his, this was his idea for the album cover. Sometimes yeah. the artists don't have, you know. Any input. Yeah. yeah. Right. No, he's very creative. Sean is, if you think about it, as a writer, as a producer, well, I'm just glad, yeah, every artist wants to put their input, but the people making the record, will they let him or not, is the question. Yeah, sometimes so, you don't get a lot. Right. You know, For him I, being that young as he was? Yes. Yeah. And they're like, hey, yeah, oh, Sean, we'll use your point. idea. That's great. Very good point, Cindy. You're right. Yeah. But he's so mature for his age. I wanted to just throw out there, we are talking about the lyricists, and one of the songs Carol Bayer Sager wrote, or co-wrote, yes. on mm-hmm. this album. And she was a big songwriter back then. She was, yeah. Like, Didn't huge, she it, do songs with Burt Bacharach? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And they wrote a lot of Dionne Warwick songs. Yes. That's how you know that sound. And mm-hmm. for him to get a Carol Bear Sager song was pretty huge. Which one did she co-write? Uh, Our Night. Ah, see? Our Night. The one that I really like. Back in 76. Yeah. I, and I think the only reason Under Wraps edges out Born Late for me is because, well, she's right, it's on Under Wraps. Right, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, different, different style songs on this one. So Born Late, yeah, I have my favorites there, but I also have my favorites on this one. Remember, it's always like heaven. It is. <laughs> mm-hmm. He is a great songwriter. He could he come out and put some more songs out, or I would love to hear other people Sing his songs. If he doesn't want to sing them, write them and let other people Well, have. Lisa Hartman sang one of his songs. Yes, she did. She did. Walk, Walk away. away. Cindy and I discussed this about our night. We'll do it until we get it right. That's funny. And I just thought that was hilarious, just that that was in the song even. And even for a teenager, right? Like, <laughs> do it all night till we get it all right. I don't um, think back then, then said, we were there yet. <laughs> I don't and, know. and then she said she wasn't, and he said she wasn't going to do that to him. But can you imagine you girls at your age and then my age trying to sing that? We didn't know what we're singing. I didn't have a clue what I was singing. <laughs> and that's a, that's true to a lot of top 40 songs back in the 70s. I think we like to tune more than the words. Like we didn't there really concentrate on the words. Yes. Can I? T- yeah, this sounds like something my mother, my mother would do. There were a couple times she made me put soap in my mouth because I said a word that I shouldn't be saying it. I didn't think it was a bad word. So it's the same idea. If I would have gone around the house and said this, I probably would have had Irish spring soap in my mouth. Well, Dame, I'm going to tell you in our innocence, I ran around the house singing all kinds of songs that I had no (laughs) idea. Yeah. 
Tonight's the night, Rod Stewart. Come on now. Yeah. You start singing that song today. How about do you think I'm sexy? Do you think I'm sexy? <laughs> How's that even on the radio? Just any yeah. and almost every song of the oh, yeah. Because the seventies, you got free, man. This is great that we did get to relive these lyrics as adults. Now yeah. we can sing them and know them and understand <laughs> them and have and a whole little really. appreciation. And it also says that Sean on this album is vocals, guitar, and keyboards. So he was. Oh, he was. I saw that. Yeah, and a lot of the music mm-hmm. too. There's right. so many that could be recognized. It was okay, great. It was fun. I have a whole new appreciation for Under Wraps. Yep. Next episode, when we dive into another album, we'll learn some new things mm-hmm. about the... Yeah, I always love the backstories. Me too. With how it came to be and what was the idea behind it. So that that's great to learn in the current day that we are in. Because we didn't really pay attention to that back in the day. So I'm that's glad we were cool. able to talk about this album and what we thought because... I don't know, back then we really didn't decipher things like this, but it was good to kind of talk about what... No, we didn't. What was preferred and what wasn't. We just called it good or icky. That was our... (laughs) That was the extent of our uh, review. Yeah, if you didn't like it, you didn't buy it, right? No, and we would love to hear from the fans if they want to write us and tell us what they thought of some of these songs. Exactly, yeah. Did you like it? Did you not like it? What's your review? Or, do you know what else we have? If they want to tell us what they thought of these songs or the podcast, any podcast in general, yeah, on okay. Buzzsprout, SeanSquadSociety.Buzzsprout.com, there is a new kind of a get in touch with us button. Yes. You click this button and you can send a message directly to the Sean Squad Society. And we send can us read, your story. And we can read it. Yeah. In our next yes. episode on the air. I'm sorry we can't reply to you, but the message will be received and we can read your comments or questions. So we would love to hear from all of you, either at Sean Squad Society at gmail.com or yes. on our social media, Instagram, Facebook, Threads, and YouTube, or at Bus Brown. Just click the button and the message will come right to us. We just disappear, living in disguise. Remember how it used to be. Right before your sky. Thank you from the bottom of our teen dream hearts. Keep on crushing. Always believe in magic. And have a peaceful, fantastic week. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Thread, and subscribe to our new YouTube page. Make sure to keep in touch with us at our email, Society at gmail.com. The Sean Squad Society podcast, including past, present, and future versions, and its contents are owned and controlled by the Sean Squad Society. The podcast is written, produced, and recorded at the Borden Studios, and the views and opinions are solely those of the Sean Squad Society podcast. We may think we are always right, but we may get things wrong from time to time, so we assume no responsibility for errors of submission of content.